This interactive simulation demonstrates the Joel Thompson effect where we have a high pressure gas expanding to low pressure rapidly. So it's a adiabatic throttle, which means the enthalpy coming in equals the enthalpy leaving. And since at high pressure, enthalpy depends on both pressure and temperature, that means the temperature can change as we lower the pressure. And you can see for the particular conditions for carbon dioxide, so this is 50 bar pressure, and this is a half bar pressure. So it's a large pressure drop, and you can see we get a small temperature decrease. The effect depends on what the inlet temperature is and what the inlet pressure is more than what the outlet pressure is, as long as, of course, we have a significant pressure drop. And this simulation allows you to pick different gases. And so now let's look at the interactive simulation. So we're looking at the interactive simulation. And again, for carbon dioxide, you can see as the pressure drops, we get a significant temperature drop. If I increase the feed pressure, notice that the temperature drop becomes a lot more significant, almost 60 degrees Kelvin. It's not very sensitive to the outlet pressure, but also note that we're varying the outlet pressure over a much narrower range. The inlet temperature matters because as I go to higher temperature, notice that the temperature drop is much smaller, right? Only five degrees if we're feeding a much higher temperature. So let's look at the case where we have a big temperature drop and we instead look at helium. Helium actually shows a slight temperature increase and hydrogen also shows a temperature increase and nitrogen shows a very slight temperature decrease. So a large difference Critical temperatures, very different, for example, between CO2 and nitrogen, between helium, hydrogen, and nitrogen. So the idea of this simulation is to give you a little better physical feeling for behavior when we do an adiabatic expansion. Remember, the first law says the enthalpy of the inlet gas is equal to the enthalpy of the outlet gas. Here is a plot of the Joule-Thompson coefficient which is number of degrees per megapascal. And notice for hydrogen over a certain temperature range, the Joule-Thompson coefficient is negative. For helium, it's negative over this entire temperature range. And then as we change the pressure, these curves also depend on pressure. So now helium at this lower inlet pressure, it's positive in some regions and negative in others. So the Joel Thompson expansion, fairly common behavior. If we fed a liquid in, of course, the behavior would be quite different. We'd have very significant temperature drops and end up with vapor liquid mixture.